Although we might like to think that an IDS is a plug-and-play and it will work as it is in any network, reality shows that this is most likely not the case. The intuition behind this is that although certain characteristics of an attack will be similar in all networks, they might not be exactly the same. This happens for normal traffic as well, after all. For example, everybody knows that uh, there, there is most likely a diurnal pattern in traffic, but if the peak load is 500 megabit per second or 2 gigabit per second, will depend on the specific network. In the case of an IDS, this means that a set of internal parameters will most likely need to be tuned to work in a specific network. The good news is that also the error rate, false positive and negatives, can be controlled by tuning the parameters. Let's go back to the benign and malicious traffic distributions. By choosing appropriate thresholds, one might be able to reduce the number of false positives to zero. However, this will most likely raise the number of false negatives. Conversely, you can find a threshold such that the number of false positives will go to zero, but most likely at the cost of a larger number of false positives. This example tells us the following. First, error rates can rarely be treated separately, and they are in most cases interleaved measures. Second, you can look for parameters values that minimize both the error rates. However, this is not the only option. For example, if following up an alert is a very costly operation and you can afford the risk of missing some attacks, you can tune your IDS such as to have a higher number of false negatives but lower false positives. Conversely, if you have, for example, an automated way of handling alerts, you can accept an higher number of false positives but lower the risk of missing out attacks. The choice of which strategies to apply depends on the security policies you wish to implement in a network. So far, we have reasoned in an abstract manner about performance and tuning of an IDS. To conclude, I would like to give you two examples of how this concept might look like when we get closer to real traffic traces. Let's first look at this graph. Here we have analyzed the distribution of the likelihood that a short time sequence of flow measurements represents normal traffic, or that it carries instead an SSH brute force attack. Likelihood is a probabilistic metric that tells us how likely it is that what we observe is an attack. Likelihood is not an absolute metric, but it refers to a model of, of reality, in this case, the normally based detection engine used to analyze the data. This graph was created using well-behaving artificial traces, therefore traces that we are fairly close to reality but were generated by a model. As you can see, the graph is already quite more complicated uh, than what we have seen so far, but the error rates are clearly uh, clear and well-defined. Now, let's look at the same picture for a real SSH trace. You can notice immediately that there is a lot more variability in the likelihood values. Also, the malicious and benign curves have a larger overlap, which we have learned means that a larger portion of the traffic um, is undistinguishable. Does this mean that we have seen a nice theory but this will not be applicable? Well, no, it is not that simple. It means that when designing an IDS, domain knowledge about the problem you are tackling, for example, which attack you want to detect, is fundamental for good, getting good results. And it also means that you should not assume your IDS is a perfect classifier, but you need instead to be prepared to handle detection errors.